Okay. <clears throat> anyway, crazy people exist. So today we're going to be talking about two different types of steelbook for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is my new one. This is my old one. Let's compare. So firstly, of course, I'm going to be breaking down the Best Buy exclusive one. I've put this in a protector because I've had it for a while. Uh, I brief background about this film. Not in terms of the actual film, but for me watching it. I watched it the first time as a Toby, Toby Hooper respective, uh, retrospective after he'd passed away. Because he had passed away, I think it was maybe a week or two after he'd passed away. It was like a September, October period of 2017. Okay, maybe a few months after he'd passed away, but I can't remember exactly when he did. The Astor Theatre in Melbourne was playing Texas Chainsaw Massacre in 35mm. And, of course, my mate was like, hey, let's go to the Astor and watch it. I'd never been to the Astor before, and I hadn't got my first week's paycheck yet. It was meant to come in that night, but it hadn't. So I grabbed 16 bucks in coin to go watch it, uh, and I really dug it. Uh, in 35mm, it is breathtaking. It is just as grungy and terrifying as it needs to be, and it happened that my friend from high school happened to sit in the front in the row in front of me, so we got to... Uh, I got to eat that popcorn <laughs> and then go home with them. It was great. So, good night. Then comes this. I bought this uh, maybe a year or two afterwards. This is a 4K remaster steelbook, the Best Buy edition. It unfortunately was not in the protector initially, so it does have a slightly, some minor scratches here and there on the front. Nothing obvious or dramatic. Uh, nice artwork overall. Very particularly designed. Uh, unfortunately, it suffers from what I like to call the... Clickety-clack. This is actually a much better clickety-clack in comparison. So it does come with a little slip, and it has four commentaries. That's it. That's the whole film. Uh, it has cool in terms of inside artwork, and the disc artwork is the same as the outside. So, of course, you look at the outside artwork, you're like, hey, that's pretty nice. It's kind of iconographying and whatever. It's not terrible and all that jazz. It obviously has the state of Texas on it. You've got the leather face. You've got the girl from the end of the film. You've got the small cast of characters in the house. It's not bad. It's not a bad steelbook. But then my ear dropped out and I can't hear anything out of my left, right, something ear. Wow, that hurts. That in, uh, is a perfectly conditioned steelbook. Again, outside of a few minor line work on the front, it's fine. The other day I got this one, which I will be featuring in a later video, but I figured I'd just talk about it here as well. I may have featured it in, my, in a June video. I got the Texas Chainsaw, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, this steelbook is the second site release, which of course you look at it and you're like, it's kind of more, I'll be honest, better looking. And ultimately, I would argue it is the better of the two steelbooks. So, of course, you've got this great silhouette with just enough detail to show Leatherface in, in the most terrifying way possible. I'm trying to show it in a way. You can, kind of, you can see enough detail about the character. Uh, and it's great. You've got the good artwork on the back, and then you realize it's a small little dent on the sun. There, is there actually a dent on the sun? Or is it, why is it seeing something? No, it's not actually. No, it's, it's weird. It's weird. It looks, more, it looks more dramatic when you put the lighting right there. Anyway. It's a very small viewfinder, it's just hard to say. Looks really nice. And the artwork continues on the back as well. You've got a beautiful silhouette. That one, obviously, much more obvious dent. I did get a small refund from the guy when I bought it uh, off eBay. Uh, it was incidentally like this. It came indented uh, on the top corner there, which sucks. But it's not terrible. It's like so out of the way, it, it doesn't bother me too much. Because again, your eyes are drawn to this. Then it gets larger and larger, and then there's the dent. So, nothing's perfect, I know, but nevertheless, here comes the real kicker. Not just is there inside artwork of the chainsaw dude, love face, chasing the chick who's behind the discs, you also get, I'm sorry, did you hear that? I said discs, with plural, because here's the movie on one disc, the same 4K remaster, and then disc number two, of course, unfortunately, no J-card, because it's second-hand. There's your inside artwork, with the girl getting chased. Disc number two, 
has bonus features. Now I know some people, even myself sometimes, don't give a fuck for bonus features. But if you want the whole package, and you want the best version of the whole package, you buy the best version. Now of course you can still get the, the two disc version from Second Sight elsewhere, other second hand markets, whatever, probably still from their website. But this is an out of print steelbook. And honestly, out of the two, I prefer this one. Again, it's the same silhouette, with this one having a lot more graphic detail on the front. So I'm going to compare them still with this one as protector. But in contrast, I like the orangey sunset feel of this. This one feels more urbanized, Texas-ish, you know. I still like the auburn burns and everything. It's nice. And on the back, of course, uh, they've got two different silhouettes. One's a chainsaw, nice artistic rendition. Ultimately, probably a better look, especially because this one's very too similar to the front cover. So I'd say that this one has the better back cover. This one's back cover is still really quite gorgeous, though. Obviously, it reminds you of a iconic scene from the very end of the film. This one, of course, has a quote on the front. <laughs> Why would I need a quote on the front of the fucking steelbook? I don't even think people still did that. That's so dumb. But yes. And of course, this one, I mean, this one still has a small space between chain and saw. This one does as well. So yeah, ultimately, this one, because of the bonus disc and the inside artwork, is the better of the two steelbooks. So yeah, this one obviously suffers from more of a clickety-clackety fu uh, function because, of course, uh, it was damaged in the transit. Still really well packaged, but and even comes came in a plastic sleeve. I know the plastic sleeve is fucking nothing. Um, but it's just interesting, in my perspective, that it came all this way. Again, not very far, just took only a few days to travel. And it only cost me about 59 Australian dollars. Uh, which isn't terrible. It's 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 not a bad price for the film. Again, 4K remaster, out of print steelbook, was mint condition until it arrived damaged, and so uh, I got 25 bucks refund from this guy, which is really nice. So uh, that compensated, plus an extra fiver. So hey, not bad, not bad. No, I don't plan to rewatch the film anytime soon. I believe I only watched it like at the start of this year anyway. I watched the 4K disc. I'm like, yeah, it's a good film. It's a film that I think, yes, you can argue it as a horror masterpiece, especially for what it was at the time and all that jazz. I don't care to rewatch it too often. I probably maybe watch it once a decade at best, because it's just, it's fine. I don't care that much to watch it that often. And again, once you've seen it in 35mm, do you really need to see it again? Because it's like, it is gorgeous in 35mm. It's terrifying. It's so loud, especially in a theatre. It's probably one of my most memorable theatre experiences for so many catalysting elements, like the first time at the Aster, the big super screen, 35mm, something I haven't seen a 35mm film in so long, um, my f seen it with my new high school friend, the not getting enough pay but still having enough money and coin to be able to you know, watch it, um, and having you know my friend from high school being the front in front of me because it was free seats and they her her boyfriend and, and his mate from another state just came in in front of us i was like oh my god it's you and she was like oh my god and it was just it was just great and it was a great a grueling and terrifying experience of a film and i really dug it um i haven't enjoyed it that much since so of course all these elements just aren't there anymore for me but it's still a, as a film by itself it's still pretty cool so yeah nevertheless that's my Texas Chainsaw Steelbook comparison review. Um, I don't know what the transfers are like, but I feel like that's something you could look up more on, like Blu-ray.com. But from what I looked up research-wise, most people look argue that it's the exact same bloody transfer. There's no difference. It's just one's region A, one's region B. So, yeah. Preference, I'd say go for the second site Steelbook if you can get your hands on it. Um, but the artwork on the region A version is not too bad. Uh... And of course, it still is, if you've got the region code issue, then region A, region B, that kind of jazz. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time. Adios.